welcome to another of Mrs. Patnell's literacy lessons. So, we are looking this week and also last week at non-fiction texts. So, um, books that contain facts that are pretty much absolutely true, okay? So, you can tell them to other people and know that they are true. So, they've not come out of someone's imagination, okay? Now, we have been looking this week at the non-fiction book, the children's book of healthy eating. We're going to carry on looking at that this lesson. I also noticed that yesterday I was having a bit of a strange day yesterday, maybe because it was a Monday. And not only did my phone run out of memory during the maths lesson repeated times, but I also managed to put two literacy lessons into one yesterday. So I gave you a lot of features of um, a non-fiction text things to look out for to help you use it and i did two lessons pretty much in one day so this lesson's gonna be a bit shorter because yesterday's one was quite long okay so let's move on yesterday we learnt about isla and ben ben was eating too much food on his plate and isla was trying to eat sweets to give her energy and we decided um, that sweets only gave you short energy so they weren't good for helping you play football and that eating too much doesn't give you lots of energy. In fact, it slows you down because it can make you heavier. So we're going to move on today to Daisy. So we're going to meet Daisy today, okay? And this is Daisy here. And we're also going to meet her friend Olivia. So there's two people today in the first question. So I'm going to read you this part here. And in this question, most likely the answer will be wrapped up in what I've just read you. So if you're listening super well, you will know the answer straight away to this question. And you can tell your parents who are there. And then we can crack on with the next question. It says, at school, Daisy and her friend Olivia don't eat much at lunchtime because they are too busy talking. Ah, OK. Yes, I've certainly seen that problem before. They are so hungry after school that they eat lots of unhealthy snacks very quickly. They feel a bit sick. Okay, so they don't eat much at lunchtime because they are busy chatting away. Then when they get home and they're so hungry because they haven't eaten much, they eat unhealthy snacks very quickly and feel a bit sick. So my question to you is, what happens if you don't eat? eat your lunch what happens if you don't eat your lunch have a pause of the video turn to your adult who is where with you and tell them what happens if you don't eat lunch okay hopefully you've had a good chat with mums and dads at home and you've decided what happens if you don't eat your lunch there's more than one right answer to this but you might have said something a bit like what happened with daisy and olivia if they don't eat their lunch at lunchtime then by three or four o'clock when they come home from school they're absolutely starving so Dinner's not ready yet because they've only just got home from school. So they grab whatever's there quick to eat. So they find themselves eating lots of the wrong stuff. So you could have said, one, you end up being absolutely hungry and feeling tired, which is a great answer. Or you could have added a bit more on and said, you end up eating the wrong food to try and fill yourself up. OK, the wrong food being those quick and easy snacks like chocolate bars or biscuits or little chocolate Swiss rolls and things like that to try and fill you up. But all they end up doing is making you feel sick because they're not they don't have anything particularly good in them for you to eat. OK, so it's very important to do a little less chatting at lunchtime and a little bit more eating of the good food so that when it comes to three and four o'clock, you're not starving. You can hang on till dinner. Okay, and you won't have to eat nonsense snacks that don't have anything good in them. Okay, next page. The next day, Olivia eats all of her lunch and has a healthy snack at home after school. Oh, fantastic, Olivia. Good thinking. Eating three meals and two healthy snacks a day keeps you feeling much healthier. Okay, so three meals a day. And two healthy snacks is a good recommendation, good idea. So not, um, not unhealthy snacks, but healthy ones, okay? So three meals a day, well, that will probably be breakfast, then lunch, and then dinner. So those are the three meals you should have every day. So if you're missing out breakfast, not a good thing, okay? It's a good idea to have your breakfast every day. And then in between those meals at certain times, somewhere in the middle of the, 
of the times in between have a little snack but try and keep it a healthy snack okay it says under here can you think of a healthy snack so pause the video have a chat with your adult in the room what do you think is a healthy snack if you've got your healthy food plate nearby maybe you can have a look at that to give you a hand what is a healthy snack Okay, you could have come up with so many ideas for this. So I may not actually say the, the idea you just gave to your parents, but they will know if it was a healthy snack or not. You might have said something like raisins. Fantastic healthy snack that goes towards your fruit and vegetables, the five fruit and vegetables a day. Um, you might have said a nice bunch of raw carrots is a fantastic snack. You might have said... Um, Let's have a think. Sometimes breadsticks can be a nice snack, actually. Just a few breadsticks to have a munch on those. They're very good for filling up a hole and giving you some slow energy. Um, you might have said a banana. Banana is so good. It gives you such a slow release of energy and it's full of that nutrient potassium, which is really good for you. That bananas are a great one to have. Lovely slow release energy, keep you feeling full up until dinner. Um, you might have said something like, Grapes is a great one. So anything in the fruits and vegetables. Um, a yogurt is very healthy. That's in your little dairy section. It's good to have some yogurt um, each day. So yeah, yogurt would be a nice snack. Um, I tell you what is quite a nice snack as well. Even though it popped up in our um, big book yesterday for being high in fat, a little bit of cheese and a couple of crackers is an excellent snack, okay? Because it would give you a nice slow release of energy. It's a little bit of fat, don't forget you can have some fat, but not too much to make you heavy. And it's full of calcium to make your teeth and bones very strong. So cheese and a couple of crackers is an excellent snack. So I may not have said your one, but I'm sure your parents have told you if it's a good healthy snack or not. Okay, my next one I'm going to go with is uh, this story about Jack. So let's have a read about Jack. Have a good listen because the answer to this question is probably wrapped up in here. Jack has lots of sweets and fizzy drinks in the holidays and doesn't take time to brush his teeth. Oh, my goodness, Jack. Now his teeth are hurting. The dentist tells Jack he has a cavity and needs a filling. He advises him to have fewer sugary foods and drinks. So remember that word fewer means less of, okay? And it says here, why does Jack need a filling? Why does he need a filling? What has... Uh, contributed, gone towards the fact that his teeth haven't stayed healthy, that he now has a cavity. So have a little stop of the video and have a chat to your adults. Okay, so you might have said one of a few things. You might have said just because he has a cavity, he has a hole in his tooth, that's why he needs a filling. But you might have said the reason why he got the cavity in the first place, which is uh, one, because he doesn't brush his teeth in the holidays. And also because he's drinking fizzy drinks and lots of sweets. So lots of reasons there. The sweets haven't helped. They gave him the hole in the first place. The fizzy drinks didn't help. They also helped to give the hole in his tooth in the first place. And he needs the filling now because he's got a hole there. He's got a cavity. So that's why he has to have a filling. Let's see what Jack does to help, to help things out. Jack switches to water or milk and has low sugar snacks. So things like we just mentioned before are excellent low sugar snacks, such as cheese and crackers. Ah! The next time Jack visits the dentist, he gets a sticker for trying so hard and remembering to clean his teeth twice a day, two times a day. Absolutely, Jack. Well done. You should all be cleaning your teeth at least two times a day, twice a day. It says here my question, what can you choose instead of sugary drinks? So that, that answer is kind of wrapped up in what I just read. So have a pause of the video, chat to your adults. What could you choose instead of sugary and fizzy drinks? Okay, so you might have said what was in the, the bit of writing above, which was milk and water, which is what Jack changed his drinks to. Fantastic drinks to have. Milk because it's got calcium in, so it's good for your teeth and for your bones, building strong bones. And water because you know we need at least eight glasses of water every single day because our body is made up at least two thirds of us. So if you 
chopped our body into three bits, two of those bits would be full of water. That's how much water is in our body. We need it because we lose it through breathing and crying and sweating and going to the loo and having a wee. So we need to replace those um, two thirds of water every day. So Jack, drinking water and milk is an excellent idea. Well done you. Now fruit juices are okay. They're okay, I would say, if you have it once a day. So if you think back, we had a suggestion of um, a glass of orange at breakfast time on one of these pages in this book. That's good. Not a massive glass, a little glass because it's got fruit in it, but it's got a lot of sugars in it. So you don't want to drink it all the time. That's not so good for your teeth, okay? So just one glass a day is fine with fruit juices, but the best ones are definitely water or milk. So excellent, Jack. Well done, you. Now, I am going to nip further back to my seats again here. Let me just tilt the camera. Now, as I told you, I went through all the features of a uh, non-fiction text review yesterday that I should have had for today. So I'm just going to whiz through the ones we did yesterday to see if you can remember them. So on the front of my non-fiction book, I have a title. The title can give me an idea about what the book is about, particularly if it's non-fiction. Okay, so this one is called Eating. I know it's probably going to be about food and digesting, eating food. Okay, so title is very fair, good place to start when you first take a book off the library shelf and think, what's this about? Look at the title. Got a guy's name down here, Paul Bennett. Why is that there? What is he? What has he done? Hmm. He is the author because he wrote the book. That's why his name's on the front. Okay, whizzing into my non-fiction book, I met with this page here, and I can blend this word, contents. Contents. It's the contents page. Remember what all these numbers were for on the contents page? There are words next to it, follow it through to the numbers. What's that for? How does that help me use a non-fiction text? Now, remember that I said that if you have a question you want to know more about or you want a question answering, you don't want to have to read the whole book. That's the joy of a non-fiction book. You can just go straight to the bit you want to know about, find out what page it's on, and read all about it and answer your question. So that's what we did yesterday with fatty foods, didn't we? Um, I did it in class today with uh, junk food. So we went to page 24 and looked up junk food. We didn't have to read the whole book. It was excellent. Okay, and then we flicked to this page here. Because, the features. because then we spoke about, ah uh, yes, on the top of the page you get bigger writing usually and mainly at the top here and that is the heading and then you can find out if you manage to get to the right page by reading the heading. The heading will also tell you about what is going to come up on that page next. So you know if you're on the right page to find out what you want to know. This heading says, why do I need to eat? So I'm going to find out why I need to eat. What, what would happen if I just didn't eat at all? So this page will tell me about that with my heading at the top. And then last of all, I showed you this yesterday, which comes at the back of an, in, uh, a non-fiction text. So I turn to the very last page. Sometimes it's the last page in a book, maybe a couple of pages in. And this is the index. index. Now, the index means I can just look for a single word that I want to know about. It doesn't have to be a whole thing like what would happen if I don't eat food. This is just a whole word. So if I wanted to find out about cakes, I would go down here. Remember, it's in alphabetical order, like the song we sing in phonics. So A, B, C... So C is the K sound, there is cakes. I can turn to page 11 or 29 and the word cakes must be on there, some information about cakes. Let's check, so let's try page 11 and see if there are or is some information about cakes on page 11. The index tells me there should be. Page 11, hmm, let's have a look. Aha, down here. Sweet foods such as cakes and chocolate are full of carbohydrates too. But too many cakes and chocolate can make you unhealthy. 
there you go. Found out about cakes. They are full of carbohydrates, so they give you energy, but they also have lots of uh, sugar in them as well and some fat. So they're not the good option to choose for giving you energy all the time. So that was my index, my contents, my heading at the top of the page, my title and the author. Okay, so tomorrow I will show you a few more features or the last features of a non-fiction text so that they, you will become experts. And when you next go to the library, when it opens up properly, you can take books off the shelf, work out if it's fiction or non-fiction, and use all of the features that I have shown you over the last few days to use your non-fiction book and find out the answers to many questions that you have. And I will see you again tomorrow for our last one on uh, non-fiction texts. Take care. Bye-bye.